Yard sales can be great places to pick up video games. The only problem is when you buy too many. So let's talk about some games that I picked up this year. We're continuing on to the next part uh, of my 2021 pickups of Your Man Out of Japan, Jay Contra, by the way. How would you know that if I didn't say it? Uh, but here I got, I did not know that people kept the boxes for their Game Boy Advance games. Uh, but I was very lucky one day, and I came across a yard sale, and I picked up Sonic the Hedgehog. Is it Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, or is it just Sonic the Hedgehog? And, like, Genesis is the name of the collection it's a part of. I don't know, but I got this for a dollar. I got very lucky, so I thought, why not? Another game that I said, why not, too, is a completed box uh, Bomberman. Uh, something that I think is underappreciated is a lot of the NES slash Famicom titles that got re-released for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, th those include like Castlevania, Metroid. There are a lot of really good games that got ported to the Game Boy Advance. And so do not miss out on those. Uh, here is one of them. Another game that I picked up from that very same yard sale, which I really want to check out because I really got into Sheer and the Wanderer. And so now I want to check out all the other mystery dungeon games that are out there. But here is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Darkness. Got really lucky with this find. Uh, really want to put that into the DS and give it a shot. Because uh, it's Pokemon RPG, so why not? Well, I mean, although Pokemon is in and of itself an RPG, so I guess another kind of Pokemon RPG, if that makes any sense. Uh, let's talk about the other one uh, that I picked up at that very same yard sale. It was pretty wild, pretty insane. Uh, here is Tomb Raider Legend, which I it's I like how it's also L Lara Croft Tomb Raider Legend. It's not like Lara Croft Legend or just Tomb Raider Legend. It's Lara Croft Tomb Raider Legend. Much like uh, James Bond 007, Agent Under Fire, <laughs> which I also picked up. Uh, it can't just be Agent Under Fire. It can't just be James Bond, Agent Under Fire. It's James Bond 007, Agent Under Fire. Uh, so uh, another theme that probably will run through uh, this video, hopefully we can get through all of these in one video, is that I'm also trying to complete a Tomb Raider collection. So I also picked up, for the PlayStation 2, uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary, as well as uh, Tomb Raider, or Lara Croft Tomb Raider, The Angel of Darkness, the three Tomb Raider games that came out for the PlayStation 2, mostly because uh, I played recently Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I so fell in love with Tomb Raider as a franchise after playing this game that you will actually see Tomb Raider show up a couple more times uh, in these pickups. Like the transition from the Super Nintendo to the N64, I sold a lot of my N64 games so that I could get a GameCube. Uh, big mistake, although I think getting rid of N64 games is not necessarily a mistake. <laughs> but getting rid of these games was a mistake. For starters, Yoshi Story, which I think has a bad rap as like a not very good game. But I played Yoshi Story very recently after buying it, and I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was fun. And the legacy, of course, is all of the cool Yoshi's game that we got for the Wii and the Wii U, and hopefully that will get for the Switch. But Yoshi Story is still very fun, very underrated, I would say. Perhaps overrated is Mario Party, because I gotta tell you, when I was playing Mario Party recently, I was like, um, yes, the mini games are fun. But the board game part is not fun because it will make you hate life. It will make you hate the idea of chance because you'll be on the top of the world. You'll have all of these stars and they just get taken from you for no reason. Uh, but still, probably actually the best mini games, I would say, of any Mario Party on average. But yeah, you're going to eventually end up either hating your friends when you play against them because they're going to steal all your coins or just hating the computer for, for ruining your life. This might be my favorite racing game of all time. It is Star Wars Episode One Racer. And while the prequels have like, they were hated for a while and then they've sort of, uh, there's been a reevaluation of them as if at least not bad, funny. But what was great, the great thing that we got out of Episode One was some really good games. And Episode One Racer is like, it's like F-Zero, but with Star Wars characters. And so what's not to love about that? I and mean, that's why I love Star Wars Episode One Racer. Finally, this is completing my childhood N64 collection. I've got a bunch of other games that I'd like to show you, and that's going to be the topic for another video. But here is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which has held its value, and is strangely enough held its value across a lot of different systems. Like even the one for the GameCube is expensive. And I'm just thinking, who wants the one for the GameCube when you could just get with the one for the N64? Now, this is a weird pickup. 
but this is the jumper pack for the N64. And now I have an expansion pack in my N64, so why would I get the jumper pack? It's because there is at least one game for the system that due to, I think, programming errors is not compatible with the expansion pack. And that game is Space Station Silicon Valley. I had to spend $10 to get a jumper pack off of eBay just so I could play Space Station Silicon Valley. Is Space Station Silicon Valley that good of a game? Uh, it's, it's good, but honestly, looking back on it, it's not that good that I should have picked up this, uh, this jumper pack. But hey, you never know, there could be another game out there that is not compatible with the expansion pack. So at least I've got it back because I was a fool and uh, got rid of the original one that I had. The other big theme of my 2021 collecting spree, and probably why I'm not going to be collecting video games for a while, or at least hunting for them, is buying back all of my childhood games. And while I am very fortunate to have most of my GameCube games from when I was a kid, I did not sell those uh, when I moved on to the Wii. I held on to them. I did sell a few, and boy, has that come back to really bite me. Uh, one of the examples of the games that I sold was Star Fox Adventures, which I, pr I probably sold so that I could buy Twilight Princess, um, which I did keep. But Star Fox Adventures, I remember be it being very much like Wind Waker or just the Legend of Zelda, 3D Legend of Zeldas in general. Um, so it was good, but like not great. Another game that I sold and then I ended up paying a lot of money for, unfortunately, uh, is Fantasy Star online this is uh, episodes one and two which i bought with, like when it first came out and i thought maybe i was gonna play it online eventually but i never did i only played it for the single player which looking back on it now was not really that fun <laughs> i gotta be honest but i had it when i was a kid so therefore i must have it now uh, because i'm a crazy person uh yes uh yes so i have told the story of drew drew if you're out there you owe me like 150 dollars uh but Part of that is getting, part of my collecting has been getting my discs back for my game. So I now finally have my Tales of Symphonia discs back. There they are, the beautiful discs, one and two. Thankfully, people on eBay are selling disc-only games. So at that, at that yard sale where I got Tomb Raider Legend and those Game Boy Advance games in the box, I got the deal of the century, or well, my deal of the century, because I got Mario Superstar Baseball and Super Mario Strikers for a dollar each, insane. And I don't know why these games are so expensive now. Maybe it's just because everything for the GameCube is expensive, but I mean, they're Mario sports games. They shouldn't be worth like $80 a piece. For $1, yes, I will absolutely recommend that you pick these up. But for $80, there are other Mario sports games out there that you can experience for cheaper. Ah, uh, yes, let's wrap up the GameCube with two James Bond games, and I guess maybe I can get into them a little bit deeper since I'm not uh, probably going to talk about these games for a while. Uh, but GoldenEye Rouge Agent is a really weird twist on the James Bond franchise because you play as like an ex MI6 agent who gets kicked out and then becomes a villain. He works with like the James Bond villains like Goldfinger, um, but it, it's really like you're like a basic ass mid 2000s fps there's really not a lot of meat to it if i'm if i'm going to be honest you can dual wield like you could in the original uh, goldeneye for the n64 so that's cool but overall it, i don't know it's hey they tried something different and so i want to give i want to give the developer some props for that but i think it honestly pales in comparison to 00, james bond 007 nightfire it's trying to fill the gap after Die Another Day. They went so far as to get Pierce Brosnan to be on the cover and to be the, you know, the face of the James Bond in the game. But they didn't actually get Pierce Brosnan to voice the character. That wouldn't happen until Everything or Nothing. Like, what a weird decision on the developer's part. But Nightfire is a good game. Don't get me wrong. There are some annoying parts of it, but otherwise, uh, very good. And actually, oh, <laughs> this is what happens when you have too many games. So I mentioned uh, to some of my Twitch viewers uh, and, and members of the Discord that I am looking for James Bond games. And Sean, who sent me uh, Futures Past, also sent me these two great games for the PlayStation, two James Bond games, 
We've got 007 racing. Remember back when kart racers were a big thing? Like there was Crash Racing. There was Star Wars Racing. Not Episode 1 Racer. It was just Star Wars Kart Racing. And then there was also 007 Racing, which I'm really looking forward to playing. And then there is also uh, the Tomorrow Never Dies game that came out for the PlayStation. I remember playing this a little bit when I was a kid, but I never was really able to sink my teeth into it. So I'm really looking forward to playing it. Can't wait. And I can't wait to play all of these James Bond video games. Yes, GoldenEye was very good, but there were also some other very good James Bond games that came out. I've been rambling a bit too much about my game pickups, and we still have a whole slew of systems to get to, a few more modern, a few not so modern. I can't wait to see you in the next video. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching, and mahalo.